So this is a quick video to discuss a degeneracy in Gaussian mixture models that actually is a correction to a statement I made in one of the previous videos. So I made the claim in one of the previous videos that the EM likelihood landscape has a bunch of equally good global maxima and I talked about how there's equally bad local maxima and possibly bad local minima. Um, and this is this is technically wrong and it's wrong in, in, in when you have an uncontrolled uh, likelihood function or when you allow the entire space of all possible model parameters and I'll show you why. So what I'll show you is that there are settings of the model parameters so, so valid solutions to the to the learning objective that can get arbitrarily large likelihoods, right? nearly infinite likelihoods. And that's that's pretty weird to think about, but but, but here, I'll show you the example. So consider you have uh, some data points like this and uh, and when you think about you know what what do you imagine to be the right Gaussian mixture model to generate this data, you would probably imagine something that looks like this, right? There's a Gaussian on the top left and a Gaussian on the bottom right. And the question is, is this a global maximum of the likelihood function? Well, I just told you it isn't, but intuitively it should be the best solution. So let me show you what leads to a global maximum that is not as good as this solution. And, and this is what why is a degeneracy. So this is the solution that would give us a really, a really huge likelihood. And what happens is in, in this situation, the likelihood goes to infinity. And to see that, we should look back at the likelihood function and uh, you know think about what the pieces are. So the important piece here is that uh, the covariance of each of the, uh, the Gaussians has this inverse relationship with the size of the likelihood score. In other words, the covariance or the determinant of the covariance shows up in the, in the denominator of the of the, the scaling function of the Gaussian likelihood, and it shows up in the, the scaling of the distance function inside the exponent. But the more important thing is the, de the, the determinant being in the denominator, because that means that if we make our covariance really small, then we get a really huge score in that Gaussian likelihood. And that's really weird because we're, we're supposed to be talking about probabilities, right? And how could a probability be greater than one? And the reason that this is possible is because we're dealing with a continuous distribution. So in a continuous distribution, we're talking about a probability density function rather than a probability uh, you know, table or something where we just list the probabilities. Instead, we're dealing with this continuous um, density function where the promise is that the area under the density function is going to be 1. So in one dimension, you can see this right here. Uh, so we, we, what, we're, what we're promised that is that it's, because it's a valid density function, if we take the integral over all possible values that could be sampled from this distribution, so in a continuous distribution that, that would be all real values, then that will sum to 1, right? The, the area underneath the curve is going to be 1. And what that means is that you can imagine you know, if, if we make the, uh, co the covariance or in the one dimension, the variance smaller, we get a more peaked curve for which the values inside the curve could be larger than one. And you can do this even further. You can, you can do this until the covariance approaches zero, like I showed you in the last slide. And as the covariance or the variance approaches zero, you get closer and closer to this weird degenerate distribution where the, all of the probability mass is on one point and it has infinite it has infinite density. Now of course you know, we're playing with infinities here or infinitesim infinitesimals, which is why this is you know technically okay mathematically, but intuitively it's very strange because we're saying that this this point has infinite density, but its probability is well it's hard to talk about that but but it still has, you know, uh, 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 an area under the likelihood function or the density function of one because the, you know, the width of that curve is zero or it approaches zero. So it, it, you know, it's hard to think about because there's all these in infinities going on. But, but it's something that 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 happens with the form of the Gaussian likelihood function, and therefore we have to deal with, we have to worry about it when we do when we do uh, EM or any sort of way of fitting a Gaussian mixture model. So there's a few ways to fix this. 
And one is to just initialize well and, and hope that you land, you don't get in a situation where the, the learning algorithm, whether it's EM or some other algorithm, can find its way toward one of these degenerate solutions. Or another way is you force the, the uh, learning algorithm not to use covariances that are too small. So you might constrain the covariance to always have some bandwidth in each dimension. So you would, maybe you would, you would make sure that all the entries on the diagonal are greater than some constant. And there's a bunch of other strategies to avoid this degeneracy. But it's important to be aware of it. Um, and even though it's, it's kind of rare for it to occur in practice, it's something to be aware of, right? If you start seeing infinite likelihoods when you're implementing these things, you, you should consider that maybe what's happening is that you're fitting one of the Gaussians around just a single point for which you can squeeze the covariance to as small, arbitrarily small values and get a huge likelihood.